I'm just so impressed with my outfit. Like. <laughs> Welcome to a week of training. Welcome to this week of workouts video. So we're currently in lockdown in Sydney. I am allowed to leave the house and we're allowed to go up to five kilometers away from our house. So I've been doing all my training at a local oval. It's about just over a kilometer away from my house. So, so it's a lovely little walk down the road. And yeah, lately I've been walking down to the oval and then starting my warm up. So I am currently training for 400 meter hurdles and I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but I start the week with a speed session at the oval. We've been seriously blessed with beautiful weather lately and I love getting the oval to myself. Unfortunately, there was a dude that was like set up on the one spot where I can put my camera. So we were sharing that area and anyway, I start with a warm up and usually at training we'll start with like a two lap jog of the athletics track. Because I'm at this oval and it's a lot smaller than an athletics track in circumference, what I've been doing lately is doing a one kilometer jog lap. It's not really a jog, it's a little bit quicker than a jog. So I would say a 1k warm up run. And does me on the other side of the oval doing my little warm up run. So I use my Garmin. Um, I have a Garmin Forerunner. There's the guy! Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> I have a Garmin Forerunner 935 that is a sports watch that I love. So I just use that to time and record the distance of the run. <laughs> So usually with my squad at training, after our jog lap, we'll take time stretching for a little bit before we get stuck into our drills. I don't really like doing too much stretching. I just kind of like get into any niggles and do a little bit of rolling and then it's into drills. So I've left all these drills in to show you guys. I do the drills over 20 or 30 meters for each drill. The first one is just, this one is the only one that doesn't really have a name. We just call it the hammy drill. So it's like a hammy stretch. It's honestly my favorite drill. It's more of a stretch and a dynamic stretch than a drill. So I usually just like walk up and down the field doing um, the drill every 20 meters or so. But for the purpose of this video, I just walked back and then did it again so I could stay in the frame. And the next drill was a skip that I just did out of the frame then into high knees and all of these drills are focused on mechanics so really good placement of the foot landing underneath the hip this next drill is b skip so very similar to a skip but just with knee extension and always just with all of our sprint drills it's just focusing on that mechanics so we have good positions and making sure we dorsiflex our feet land nice and tall striking underneath your center of mass underneath your hip height and yeah so it's all about the good positions so it translates into your running mechanics, but also about warming up the body in the most specific way to how you want to run. So the next drill is just like a fast leg kind of cycle. This isn't even that fast, but it's like a leg cycle. And a lot of these next few drills are done with a run through. So then I do a lateral drill, so out togethers or sidesteps. Um, and then the drills after this are done with like a 30 meter runoff after them. So skip for height into a run, then straight leg scissors into a run. And then we go into our dribbles. So dribbles are a very important sprinter's mechanic kind of drill where you're trying to really focus on dorsiflexion and landing under your hip nice and tall. So we do dribbles over the ankle, over the calf and over the knee and all of them with the 20 meter runoff. Okay, so after drills, I actually can't do a session without leg swings. My favorite dynamic drill, there's a lot of different dynamics we do but at the moment i'm literally just been doing leg swings because i've been feeling pretty warm in the middle of the day so we do 40 leg swings all together 10 each side side to side and then 10 each side front and back and then it's time for a whole lot of run throughs so this is the time we usually spike up so we pop our spikes on for our run throughs in our session or sometimes we use racing flats which is what i'm racing in not racing in sorry running in at the moment which we like to try and stick in in off season or winter just for health of your body and avoiding injury spikes aren't very supportive at all and it's also really great um one of the perks of lockdown is that all my training's been on grass lately so that is another good thing because it's very supportive and yeah much softer surface so less injuries for sure so once i have got my racing flats on and i'm all warmed up i do a whole heap of run throughs before starting the session so as I mentioned, Monday is a speed session. So it's a short speed session, all about really explosive speed. I actually had belly starts on my program. There was a B, that's why I moved locations. 
Um, yeah, so I started the session with four 30 meter belly starts, which I am not a fan of. I don't, your girl's not a fan of belly starts, but the coach has it on the program. And the reason I'm not a fan of them is because I've lost so much of that fast twitch explosive speed, which it really helps with this off the mark speed to work on it by doing belly starts. So I copped it and I did all my belly starts and yeah, so the short speed stuff, it's all about mechanics and turnover. Um, it's definitely my most set, um, easy session of the week. And it's my most fun because it's not really like death. Like you're not getting lactic. Your heart rate's not getting super, super high. It's all just about working on the turnover. So this is something I desperately need after having lost a lot of speed. But it is, it's still like, it's still hard. Like you still work hard. My heart rate did get up to like 150s throughout the session, which is not that high. But for a short speed session, it's kind of decent. Okay. And then I had three sets of, it's kind of like a pyramid short sprints 20 meters 30 meters 40 meters 50 meters times three so I just walked back recovery in between took like three minutes between the sets and just really worked on trying to be as explosive and quick as possible after those three sets I then had three reps of build for 20 fly for 50 so flying 50s with basically like a 20 meter run in and then I did a like 100 minute time trial on myself because I've been chucking that into quite a few sessions lately just to try and get that speed back down. I'm so happy with that. What the heck? Progress. We love that for me. So I know it's not quick and my 16 year old self was like more than a second quicker but it's progress and I know it's not even that accurate, but I'm just happy to see that hundred times start to come down again. So then I'll pop my flats back on and do a cool down. So I'll either do a 10 minute cool down. So just keep jogging laps for 10 minutes, which is like two and a half K ish, a bit under, or I'll just jog a lap, which is what I did today. So usually I'll just jog a lap if I do some type of circuit later on. Um, so yeah, I did a jog lap cool down before walking back home. Psych, I need my camera. I'm not leaving it at the oval. <laughs> okay, so Mondays, if we do have a circuit, it's usually a plyometric circuit. So lots of different types of jumps because it is speed day. So it's all focused on like explosive and powerful movements. Because I didn't do a circuit at the oval, instead I did some um, practicing my cleans. So just working on that power um, and strength which definitely needs a lot of work. I'm just trying to um, learn the technique of a clean. Um, so I practiced that and then I did a couple of body weight exercises. So the reason I didn't do the speed power jump circuits that we usually have is because my shin sometimes flares up a little bit. And since I do have quite a few sessions throughout the week and I'm hurdling, I thought I would leave it this week. And then if I pull up all good after that, introduce it back next week. So here I'm just practicing my cleans. Don't judge me. I, as I said, I'm not the best at cleans. Um, and I don't have the best option of weights because I am using the stuff I have at home um, being on lockdown. So then I just did a couple of body weight exercises. I just did a circuit with three rounds of push-ups, leg raises, Russian twists, and then just walking body weight lunges. This is the type of stuff that we used to always do at the track after workouts. So I just chucked that in instead of a plyo circuit for some strength. So I thought I'd do a proper intro to this week of workouts uh, video. This is the first day of week 10 of lockdown, so that's why my training is a bit, bit different. So rather than my normal training like at the track with my squad and coach and in a gym, I've been training on my own at a local oval. We're allowed to travel up to five kilometers in our local government area. Luckily, there's heaps of ovals around. So the oval that I go to is like just over a kilometer away. So basically, my training consists of four track sessions a week, and they're going to be a mix of speed, speed endurance, conditioning and like tempo work and then hurdle stuff. So I train for 400 meter hurdles, but if you guys have seen my videos, you would know that I'm trying to like regain a lot of speed that I lost back when I lost a lot of weight. Check out my other videos for like the full story on that because it's just another story in itself. Um, so a lot of the sessions I'm doing right now are more of the like 100, 200 sprinters work from our squad rather than the 400 stuff just to get speed back because speed is like very important. So it is a lot shorter distance and volume than um, usual off-season stuff. So currently it is the end of August, which is like the middle of our off-season. It's winter in Australia. And then the competition season starts in summer um, and it goes all through summer to like 
around April. And then on top of those four sessions, I'll do two to three like strength sessions with weights and body weight stuff. So that's basically what my training is at the moment. I'll be showing you guys that throughout the week. And I have been really enjoying training and getting more out of it now that I'm like fueling properly and recovering properly and enjoying it. But anyway, that was Monday's training session and I'll see you guys tomorrow on Tuesday. By the way, I should add, this is just training at the moment. So this is like a typical week currently but it does change depending on like the season so like if we're in competition season or if it's off season or if you have a race coming up or if there's something you have to specifically work on so for me that's speed but like if someone has lost a lot of fitness but they have speed then they'd have a lot more tempo and conditioning work and more volume in it so this is just a typical week at the moment so that was monday and i thought i'd just show you my garmin at the end of the day because it's interesting to see the different step count and expenditure based on the training session so i had just over fifteen thousand steps and in terms of active calories it was just under 600 active calories just keep in mind with sports watches they cannot actually know the actual calorie expenditure you have or the needs you have so i never look at this to go off the calories it's just interesting to see um each day but yeah that was monday and now we go into tuesday okay so tuesday is the first strength or gym day where i focus on weighted exercises and just strength movements i'm currently my own pt for my strength training so i am just doing two at the moment this week and i always start with a warm-up my warm-up is all just focused on getting a little bit warm opening up the joints and stuff but mainly focus on activating specific muscle groups my gym workouts at the moment are full body workouts, so both upper and lower, but focusing on lower body as that's most important for running, obviously. And I always start with the biggest muscle groups first. I like to pair my exercises together. So the first set is a superset with front squats. So front box squats is what I'm doing here. I did 10 reps with around 35 kilos and then I supersetted it. So I went straight into hip thrusts and I did 12 reps with 40 kilos. Altogether, I did four rounds, so four sets of that superset. So I tried to superset the exercises and go straight from one to the other. It was a little bit hard with setting up the equipment, being, you know, having that lockdown home set up. Um, and then I took two minutes between the superset. So after hip thrust, I'd have two minutes before I jumped straight back into the set again. I'm really just working on movements that are building strength, so helping build that muscle mass, get stronger, so you can be more explosive and have that power to weight ratio. And I'm just working on progressive overload. So it is hard with limited equipment, but I'm trying to progressive overload by increasing reps and sets, and then sometimes weights when I have the equipment available. Um, so each week I'll just try and do more reps than I did the week before or increase the weight if I can. So one of the most important things to increase um, the difficulty or overload it is the effort. So doing things with more effort, you know, doing eccentric reps. So going down as slow as you can in a squat and then explosively powering on the way up. So I'm making sure I have good technique and perform everything with effort and yeah, just get the most out of everything I do. And when I say effort, it doesn't necessarily mean going for the heaviest weight. It means using the most tension. So trying really hard to force the tension through the muscles that you're using, even with limited weight. What I'm doing here is filling out my training diary, which I do after every session. I'll put in, you know, my times when I'm running the weights and reps I do in a lifting session and how I'm feeling and all that jazz. So the second set, I paired reverse alternating lunges and box jumps. As you can see here, I was trying to increase the weight that I used from the week before, but I just, I couldn't send it. I tried to send it, but like when I tried to overhead press that 35 kilo bar and get it onto my back, I think I physically could do it, but no, mentally I kind of freaked out. So, so we just went with 20 kilos. So around 25, I'm not hundred percent sure how much the bar actually weighs, but it's pretty light. So I did 30 reverse alternating lunges and I supersetted that with eight box jumps. It was pretty hard going straight from reverse lunges into box jumps, but that's the beauty of a superset. It's more time under tension and more difficulty. So obviously box jumps aren't really time under tension, but that's just focusing on that like explosive power, trying to just get more, more powerful and explosive. So I did three sets of that superset in total. And then I move on to my upper body set where I paired pull-ups with a overhead press with a barbell. So I only did two pull-ups in each set. I haven't been practicing pull-ups and that is a very um, easy 
part of strength to lose for me. So I just did two because I'm trying to make them strict, good technique, and they're also quite fatiguing. So each set I did two pull-ups and then six overhead press with a about 22 kilo barbell. I'm pretty sure that bar I have is about 12 kilos. And then I had another 10 on the bar. Um, so yeah, both of these, obviously I'm not as strong in upper body, but just focusing on building that strength, but doing it with good technique. So after three sets of that, I did a core circuit. So for my core circuit, it took me about five to 10 minutes. Um, I also was listening to some jams and just like feeling energetic, feeling vibey. So I was jamming. I don't know why I'm leaving this in because I'm, I'm aware that my dancing is awful. Either way, editing me has realized that, that was, this is actually my last upper body set of the pull-ups and overhead press before my core circuit to finish with. But yeah, I was just having a good old time and listening to some bangers and just enjoying myself. So after my last set of upper body, I then do my core circuit, which it took like 10 minutes. So the first exercise I did was I'm not too sure what to call this. Everyone has a different name, but I call them hanging bent twists. So it's like a hanging leg raise, but crunching to the side with bent legs. So I do 16 all together, and then I just did six ab wheel rollouts. Then I did 16 renegade rows with two five kilo dumbbells. Then I call these plank pull throughs, 16 of those, and then 16 X reaches, which is what I call that last exercise. And that was the core circuit. Um, other activity for the rest of the day, I went on a couple of walks, listening to some podcasts because lockdown vibes, and it's just a really nice to get some active recovery and movement in there as well. So yeah, I even though it was like a strength day and it's not a running day, I still like clocked up a lot of steps, um, which I think is good for, you know, not seizing up when you sit for too long. Again, just for interest, because I know this ain't too accurate in terms of calories, but steps were above 12,000 and active cows around 350. Also, don't worry guys, I definitely ate more than 1800 calories on this day because I'm aware that that is not accurate and also there was still two and a half hours of the day left so it ended up being above 2000. Okay, so Wednesday I started with my warm-up so I didn't include all of that because it was the same as Monday but I did my 1k run, all my drills, run-throughs, all that jazz and then my leg swings getting ready for our session. So Wednesdays is our speed endurance or like lactic session. So it's our hard session of the week and I always get nervous for a lactic session. Okay, I know in terms of speed endurance, this is quite a chill session, but I still get really nervous every time I have a speed endurance session. <sighs> Okay, so I know I said this session was kind of an easy speed endurance session, which it is. It's usually something we do in the middle of competition season. But the reason I'm doing this session is because I've lost a lot of speed. So it's not that difficult. You know, a difficult speed endurance would be like 300s, but I had hundreds. The session was for 100 reps with a strict 90 seconds rest in between and three sets all together. I know it sounds kind of chill. Okay. Set one done. It's really hot. I was really hoping to hold every rep under 14 seconds. Yes, I know it's not that quick. I'm trying to get my speed back. Also, I'm on grass and flats. And timing it on my watch, that's the hardest thing. Having to like stop it myself. So it's I know it's not that accurate. It's too hard to try and stop it over the line, so it's always gonna be like a couple of milliseconds over. I only got one of them under 14, I did 13 and 7, and then the others were all like very low 14s. But it was, I know it's like really rough times. These sets are going to hurt more every time. So I took five minutes rest between the three sets, and even though I said this is like a pretty chill for a speed endurance session, it's still it's still hard, and you still get lactic if you're trying to like hold absolute max speed for each rep. So yeah, I was trying to push each rep and keep it quick, so I can really get that extra turnover speed development out of it. But yeah, my heart rate went to 170. It's already dropped really fast, but one of the things about having lost heaps of speed. Like, I used to do this session way quicker, but it wasn't close to my max, because I had a lot more speed. But I'm trying to like push every rep. Today's the first day I haven't felt quite energetic for a while, like, 
feel a bit tired mid running, so it's hard to push. I'm definitely ready for my rest day tomorrow. <laughs> Swapping my shoes over and doing a 10 minute cool down jog. No circuit today. No thank you, sir. I'm tired and very sore from the last few days. Holy guacamole. I don't know, I feel gross. This is a cool down jog, which ended up being more like a yog. I don't even know what that means, but it was just um throwback to earlier in this vlog when I said I do about two and a half K on a cool down jog. I felt sick. I had a lactic and I got a stitch instantly when I started that jog. I was almost like do I just not do this? But then I was like, just do it slowly. It's just meant to be a cool down jog. And that felt torturous, but like so good as well. You guys, if you run, then you know, but it was slow. Okay, there was my anti-clockwise cool down jog. We ain't trying to break records here. We're just trying to get fitness and cool down properly. So <sighs> endurance day done. Next up, we have a rest day. It's literally the middle of the day. Me running in the middle of the day thinking this is not safe this australian sun at this time of day is really unsafe and that was the end of the day's steps and active cows just for interest just to show how physically active some of these training days are so i just filmed a video that's coming next week <laughs> trying on heaps of clothes um today is a rest day a very needed rest day my body is sore like my muscles feel it so yeah it's really important to have at least one rest day a week like essential even if you feel good and energetic every day of the week you gotta rest from like hard training so on a rest day i still get movement in i still go for walks um get my steps up but nothing too hardcore just keeping it chill so Thursday was a rest day. I always choose at least one day of the week to take a rest day and I can alternate it when we're in lockdown because I choose the days I train. But it's essential to have a rest day. Every athlete I know has at least one rest day a week and sometimes if you need it, take two and double up workouts on two days because rest days are essential to actually repair, recover and get any training adaptations. Otherwise, you just burn out, run yourself into the ground and start to break down. So you need to give your body that time to recover and yeah, take a day off. So that's what I did on Thursday. Peep my new phone case that I am obsessed with. So on a rest day, I do walk and get like active rest, but it's not obviously taxing on the body and stressful to the systems and muscles. So it is just very chill and rejuvenating. So that was Thursday and then Friday is my hurdle session. You guys know I love hurdling so much. So for my hurdle session, I had an alternate hurdle session. Um, I haven't shown the full warm up because I did the same warm up as all the other days. And then on top of that, I also have all the hurdle drills. So with the hurdle drills, we usually have five hurdles and I only have three. Obviously we're on lockdown, so I just use what I have. So I just did extra drills. So my hurdle sessions are usually 400 meter hurdle sessions, but obviously I do not have access to an athletics track. So rather than a session that needed a bend, I did an alternate hurdle leg session instead. So this is my favorite drill. I just call it the jumpy drill. We don't really have a name for it. If you can't tell, that was my bad leg. And if you can't tell, that was awesome. Awesome hurdling right there. <laughs> so with an alternate hurdle session, it's basically hurdling, alternating the legs that you hurdle with. So this is my lead leg, right lead, but that's not my lead leg, left lead, but I need to be good at both as a 400 meter hurdler. And yes, I, you're probably thinking, why are you not good at both already? I have not been able to do as much hurdling I, as I ideally would do as a 400 meter hurdler since my stress fracture. I have to be very careful. And today my hurdling was quite rusty. I haven't hurdled for a few weeks because of some shin niggles. So honestly, it was just trying to get, get dust some of the rust off this session. But basically the alternate hurdle session was two sets of five reps. Um, it was about 60 meters in total. and. 20 meters to the first, 10 meters between each hurdle, and I'm trying to swap the leg I hurdle with. So here I go alternate and then good leg and then alternate. So basically whichever leg you come off on the first hurdle, you swap for the next hurdle, um, except that last rep. 
Um, I did a bit of a core circuit when I got home. I actually tested out one of my own circuits I made up for the ebook I'm trying to write. I don't know if this will make the cut. It was kind of lame. It was only like a 10 minute quick circuit to be like a finisher after training sessions. But yeah, that's what I did when I got home and that is Friday's training. So that was the end of Friday, and then we moved to Saturday. All right, so on Saturday, I usually do my second weight session, and then on Sunday, I do a tempo conditioning session. But I decided to swap it because it's supposed to be raining the rest of the weekend. It's actually currently raining, and I'm recording this voiceover on Saturday night. Um, so I decided to do my tempo session that I usually do on Sunday. So I did my normal warm up, I did my 1k run and then all my drills and I did them up and down the field. So I didn't get most of them in the shot. Then I did my dribbles and run throughs and then started the session. So tempo is all about just fitness, conditioning and holding positions. It's not quick. Um, and I just did one of the tempo sessions, well, the session on our program at the moment, but it's one of our go-to sessions. I'd say our main go-to sessions for the 400 runners are three by three by 300 and 10 200s. This one is the other one or one of the others. And it's one, 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 as in 100, 100, 100, then one, two, one, one, as in 100, 200, 100, 100 then one, two, two, one, and then back down the pyramid. So one, two, one, 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 one. So it's like five sets all together. I hope that made sense. Um, basically, you're meant to do this around circles on the track and you walk 50 meters between reps and walk 100 meters between sets. Um, I just kind of kept my watch going, walked a bit and tried to keep it relatively consistent. And yeah, I just aimed to hold like high 16 rhythm for each like 100 segment. And I kept a timer going and just tried to keep the overall session under a certain time. Then I did my 10 minute cool down jog, which was just over 2K. And before I explain this weight session that you're about to see, I just wanted to explain that I always do those um, cool down and warm up runs clockwise, which is the opposite direction that we normally compete and run on an athletics track. We're always running anti-clockwise. So it's important to do some running warm up and cool downs in the opposite direction because your one side is going to be working more than the other and you just want to balance it out to avoid like injuries on one side. Anyway, on the way home, I was just, I was sore. I was thinking how tired and like spent my body was feeling. And I was like, you know what? I need a full rest day tomorrow from training. So I'm just going to do my strength session now before the stormy weather comes for the rest of the weekend as well. Um, and then take a full rest day tomorrow. So that was what I did. So I did my strength session on Saturday as well. And usually, as I explained, I would do either a session one day and one the next and not double up, but I just doubled up to have a rest day. So the first set was a super set. I did three sets of eight front squats with um, 10 RDLs. And then the second super set was eight Bulgarian split squats on each side and then eight, sorry, 10 step ups on each side. And then I have a 10 kilo dumbbell for that for the first set, I used like 30 and 45 kilos respectively. And then the last set was push-ups and single arm bent over rows. And I did three rounds of all three of those supersets. And then I finished with a five minute core circuit, which I didn't film, but just take my word, I did it. And your girl is so sore and the training week is done. And I just got out of an Epsom salt bath because mm -hmm, I'm feeling it. And I had a cold shower before. And you know you saw when the cold shower wasn't torturous, but it was highly enjoyable. So yeah, tomorrow is going to be a second rest day of the week, which I usually haven't been doing lately. But this training week was solid and I just need a day off before I start another training week on Mondays. So that wraps up my week of training since I did all of my sessions by Saturday and Sunday ended up being a rest day. 
So the weather was completely wrong. The sun came out. It ended up being even more beautiful on Sunday than Saturday. But I was just glad to have a rest day and spend some time with my family anyway. So we did a long walk along the river. It was actually Father's Day. Um, and then I did a few other little walks just throughout the day because lockdown is boring when you have a rest day. Um, but yeah, so it was really lovely weather. And honestly, having a rest day is so important. Obviously, I spoke before, but it's just a good mental break as well from it all. And yeah, I just thought I'd leave these beautiful shots in to show you how freaking stunning it was. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I love training this week. It was really fun. And that wraps up the week. So that was the end of Sunday. It's still quite early in the day, but I thought I'd finish filming up now so I can edit this. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye!